welcome to institute of quality and reliability hi this is heman analysis of variance anova part 1 concepts and introduction to one way anova before watching this video we recommend viewers to watch our previous videos on hypothesis testing and central limit theorem link to these videos are provided in the description of this video in this video we have explained applicability of analysis of variance or anova introduction to one way anova one way anova illustration the f test and f distribution interpretation of results when should we use anova consider the following examples an educational institution wants to find out whether mean scores of students taught by three different professors are equal another example a construction company wants to find out whether mean strength of concrete with four different sources is equal or different an engine research team wants to assess whether different injector designs result in the same emission levels anova is extensively used in analysis of designed experiments anova is a powerful statistical analysis tool that can be used to compare means of three or more populations other hypothesis tests such as t test can be used to compare only two populations anova was developed by r a fisher analysis of variance or anova is used to test hypothesis about differences between two or more means while we call this analysis of variance we are actually comparing means of the groups the null hypothesis in anova could take a form like h0 mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 you could have more population means also alternate hypothesis is given by h1 any of the means is different let us look at concepts of anova procedure in one way anova we compare two different estimates of variance of overall population one variance between the sample means and two variance within the samples then we compare the two estimates to decide whether we can reject the null hypothesis anova can be one way two way three way etc in this part one of our video on anova we will discuss concepts and one way anova example in part 2 we will explain the procedure using microsoft excel it is a very useful statistical tool for analysis in design of experiments let us understand concepts of one way analysis of variance with an application example consider that there are three different types of motorcycles in a particular range of horsepower an auto magazine wants to compare the fuel economy of the three models for kilometers per liter of petrol the evaluation team decides to take three samples of each bike and test it on a road that is generally level and does not have much traffic the team also decides that a rider should maintain a speed of 40 km per hour this is to ensure that these uncontrolled factors do not affect our conclusions significantly after completion of the runs following data is collected this is the data of the three motorcycle models and three samples each for kilometers per liter of petrol is the difference between the mean fuel economy of the three makes significant at 95% confidence level as we try to understand the procedure for analysis of variance 
we need to recall the concepts of central limit theorem. A complete video on central limit theorem is available in our YouTube channel and a link to this video is mentioned in the description of this video. According to central limit theorem, averages of sample size n drawn from a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma tend to follow normal distribution with the same mean mu but standard deviation sigma x bar equal to the original standard deviation sigma divided by square root of the sample size n. The term sigma x bar is called standard error of mean. Variance is square of standard deviation and therefore sigma x bar square is equal to sigma square upon n. As per central limit theorem, sigma x bar square equals sigma square upon n and therefore estimate of sigma square that is the population variance can be made as n into sigma x bar square. This is the estimate of population variance from the group means and this is referred as variance between groups. Estimate of sigma x bar square can be made from the group means using the variance formula which is shown here. Now from the data, we can easily calculate the grand mean x bar as 43.1111 and group means of A as 46.00 for B 41.33 and group mean of C as 42.00. Using this, we can calculate S x bar square as 6.37. Now we have to multiply this by the sample size n to estimate variance between groups and therefore s square between is equal to n into s x bar square that is 3 into 6.37 which works out to be 19.111. This is one estimate of variance from the group means. We can also estimate the population variance from the variances within each group and taking their average. We can call this as variance within groups. Variance of each group can be easily calculated on Excel as shown. So variance of A is 1.00, variance of B is 4.33 and variance of C is 3. Estimate of sigma square will therefore be average of the three variances. This is possible as the sample size of each group is same as 3. If the sample sizes were not equal, we would need to calculate the weighted average. So S square within is the average of the three variances, which works out to be 2.78. This is estimate of population variance from within groups. So we have calculated S square between as 19.11 and S square within as 2.78. If null hypothesis H0, that is if the group means are equal, these two variances will be equal as per central limit theorem. If the group means differ, the estimate of population variance S square between will get inflated. We need to perform test of equal variances to conclude this. When the populations are normally distributed, F test can be performed to test equality of variances. Test of equal variances F test. For F test, the null hypothesis will be equality of the variances and alternate hypothesis will be either inequality of the variances which will be a two tail test with alpha risk equally distributed on both the tails or H1 could be sigma 1 square is greater than sigma 2 square which will be a right tail test with alpha risk distributed on the right tail. And the third possibility is that sigma 1 square is less than sigma 2 square which will be a left tail test with whole alpha risk on the left tail. F statistic can be calculated as the ratio of the two variances and the larger variance is customarily placed in numerator so that the F calculated is greater than 1. This is because conventionally tables of F distribution are available for right tail only. This is really not a constraint with Excel functions available for F distribution. For our case, the null hypothesis will be 
sigma square between equals sigma square within and the alternate hypothesis h1 will be sigma square between greater than sigma square within and this will be a right tail test so s square between that is estimate of the variance between equals 19.11 and s square within equals 2.78 the f calculated equals ratio of the two variances and that is 19.11 upon 2.78 which is 6.88 this f calculated value of 6.88 must be compared with critical value of f distribution shape of f distribution is decided by the degrees of freedom for the numerator and denominator this is the data so the total degrees of freedom is 9 minus 1 as there are total 9 data points so that is equal to 8 degrees of freedom for variance between groups will be 2 as there are 3 motorcycle makes these are for the numerator thus degrees of freedom for variance within group will be 8 minus 2 that is 6 these are for the denominator watch our video on degrees of freedom for a better understanding of this concept link is provided in the description of this video we will use f distribution applet from university of iowa new one is the numerator degrees of freedom which is 2 and new 2 is the denominator degrees of freedom which is 6 and you can see the shape of the f distribution now we put x is equal to uh, 6.88 which is the calculated f ratio and you can see that the p value is 0.028 and the rule is when the p value is less than alpha risk we must reject null hypothesis h0 and that means that at least one of the motorcycle models has got a different fuel consumption compared to the other motorcycle models we can also use tables of f distribution which can be downloaded from our website www.world-class-quality.com this is the table of f distribution but this table is with alpha risk of 0.05 so we can scroll down to look at the next table which is for alpha risk of 0.1 we further scroll down to see alpha risk of 0.05 and in this table you can see that the numerator degrees of freedom we want to use 2 as there are three groups and two degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom is 6 and for these two parameters the f distribution value is 5.14 so we add this value to the applet as x is equal to 5.14 and see that the area to the right is 0.05006 we can adjust the third decimal to exactly see at what value it matches with the alpha risk of 0.05 that is 5.143 so the exact value of uh, f distribution is 5.143 corresponding to alpha risk of 0.05 since f calculated of 6.88 is more than f critical value of 5.143 we must reject null hypothesis and conclude that at least one of the means is significantly different compared to others at 95% confidence level in this video we have explained the concepts of one way anova with an illustration and also how to perform f test using f distribution in our next video anova part 2 we will explain how to perform one way anova using microsoft excel we will also illustrate calculations of sum of squares and anova table in anova part 2 thanks for watching this video hope you found it worth watching please subscribe to institute of quality and reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering six sigma and statistical quality control click the subscribe and bell icon for getting intimations on the future videos